Hello everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and in the next of our Skill Builder series we are going to be talking about a zigzagged seam finish today. Now zigzag is a um, stitch that you'll find on most of the even most basic machines. You won't find it on a vintage machine because they didn't, didn't do that stitch then so that what, if you've got a vintage machine that you sew on you'll have to skip this one. But if, um, if you've got a standard machine then chances are you'll have a zigzag stitch. Now I'll pop a picture up for you of what my, of the stitch it actually is on my machine so that you can hopefully identify it from the picture on your machine when you go looking for it. So once you've identified the zigzag stitch on your machine and that you've actually got one on there then let's have a chat through about how we can adjust it and what we can use it for. So here I've got an example of a zigzagged seam. We start off with the unfinished seam, and this you've already um, completed the other day. Move that that way around, that'd be easier. Um, and um, what um, we did, we found the other day was that, that on an unfinished seam, we're always gonna have this fraying unless you're using a fabric that doesn't fray at all. So what um, we need to do then is look at a different way of finishing it if we've not got any pinking shears and that's to use this zigzag stitch on our sewing machine. So we can see that now I've zigzagged these two um, seams separately so that they can lie flat and um, that helps with um, the the, the lie of your garment and the way that you're wearing it, it doesn't, if you zigzag these two together, it would make it quite bulky and that seam has to go one way or the other. So we tend to find that if we press it open that that'll work best. And then once we've sewn our seam, we go along and we do the zigzag stitch. Now on this zigzag, we can see that in actual fact in, in sewing it, the one side of fabric has actually turned over to the other. So it's actually, giving this really nice, neat finish. It doesn't always happen like that. And sometimes you might go really close up to the edge and not quite over, and that's fine too. But we'll talk about how to set up your machine in order that you can get this nice finish. The only thing that you need to really be aware of, I think, with a zigzag stitch that I'm thinking at the moment, is that if you, and this is the reason why we're doing samples so you can actually experience this and feel it, is that when you actually run your finger over the garment, you can feel a slight ridge where those zigzag those stitches are. Now, that's not too bad on a fabric that doesn't um, mark when you iron it, but if you think when you're wearing and pressing this garment afterwards, um, you're always going to get this little ridge, and when you run your iron over it or you're pressing it before you're wearing it, then what you can find is that sometimes you get a bit of um, fading of the fabric colour or a bit of a prominent bump, permanent bump on, on the edge of, of your, um, on the on the sides of your garment. So just be aware that that might be an issue um, and you may then choose if it's going to be a, a, a fabric that's going to mark particularly um particularly harshly then you may choose to do a pinked seam instead which is the one that we that we've already spoken about so have a look at that one and that one will sit much flatter underneath your garments but for this one this is the zigzag seam this is how neat it finishes there's no there's no fraying on there at all your garment's going to stay nice and pristine and you're going to preserve your seam allowance should you ever wish to change the size of this garment in the future by just um, sewing another seam closer to the zigzag edges, unpicking this and then pressing it flat again and that will give you extra extra room in your garment should your, should your size change. So what I want you to do now is to go and recreate another unfinished seam sample. So um, just get yourself to this stage here. Um, you can follow the other tutorial in, in order to get this, it's fairly straightforward. And then once you've got your, your next one, which I've got prepared here ready, then we're going to start and set up the machine for the zigzag stitch. So just before we jump into using our machine to demonstrate the stitch, I just want to talk to you about stitch width and stitch length. Now, the best way that I can try and describe this to you is if we look at the lines on this, this pad of paper. So if I just draw a line here, Okay, and a line here. So sometimes when we're talking about a zigzag stitch, which presents like this, it can be tricky sometimes to remember which is which. So your stitch width is going to be the difference between these two lines here, okay? So you can have a really narrow zigzag stitch like this if you're doing an applique and it can look like a satin stitch, um, but you can also take it much wider 
like this, but still keep it narrow depending on what you're trying to do. So the width of the stitch is how far it zigs across and zags across. So like this, okay. Now, stitch length is how far it travels this way. So if I put some arrows, that's width and this is length. It might seem obvious, but when you're trying to set it upon your machine sometimes, you don't always see it. So on my machine, the width is, is denoted by a symbol like that and the length is de determined like this, okay. So again, so on the on the length of the zigzag, if we were doing a satin stitch, we would have a short length because we might have it quite deep, but we've got a short length so the stitches stay close together. But then as we're doing perhaps a seam on a, on a thicker fabric, um, seam finish, we might just need one that does a zigzag like this. So this is the length, how close together your stitches are is the length. And then the width is how wide across they are and how much space they're covering. So hopefully that makes sense. It's, it's sometimes difficult to try and explain some of these concepts in words. And, and um, I do my very best, but hopefully that, that will make sense to you as to which way when we're talking about the width of the stitch and the length of the stitch. So you'll need to refer to your owner's manual for your machine to find out your particular setup. But for me, I know that it's stitch number eight. So I'm just going to use my um, stitch selector here and I'll just move that one to number eight. And then that will set up my machine for a zigzag stitch. Um, also on my machine, I can then press and that will then change the width for me. So I'm gonna keep it at five at the moment just to show you. And then also on my stitch length, it's automatically sent up at two. So it's always worth having a look and see what your standard settings are. And then we can adjust that to what we what kind of finish we want. We'll want tighter um, stitches closer together if we've got a lo very loose weave fabric because that'll give us more stability. But if we've got a thicker fabric, um, perhaps a wool, we can take slightly longer stitches. The same thing with the width. If, we if we've got a very fine fabric, we might choose to have slightly narrower stitches. And again, if we've got like a denim or, or like um, an upholstery weight fabric, again, we'll go slightly wider um, if we want to, just to make sure we've secured those stitches. So I have my machine set up now for the zigzag stitch and I can see that the needle's already come across to one side. I'm going to just take my sample of fabric, we've got my unfinished seam here, and I'm going to just fold one side of my fabric underneath so it exposes just one seam allowance. I'm then gonna fit seam allowance underneath my needle and it's always good if you've got enough room to accommodate your presser foot because if you try and sort of zigzag over here you're going to go a bit skew with because the the um the depth here with it being three pieces of fabric is deeper than the single okay so let's now just have a go and it's going to just start off my machine does a few stitches in place first before it starts going so let's just do those so that starts it off and we can see that it doesn't it, sometimes it takes a little bit to get your eye in to see where across here your, mach your machine and stitches are actually going. So ideally you want to be just over so you're zigging on, on your fabric but zagging if you like just off and you can look through the centre of your presser foot here and that will tell you where you're actually going. It's just folding it over slightly as we go. So that's giving us a nicely finished and going to catch any loose edges. So if we want to go thicker than we've got, then I can go right up to a size seven on my machine and we'll see what difference that one makes when we've finished. And then also if we want to go thinner, then we can also go down to say a two and you'll see the difference that that makes. See, so now I've gone off the edge there. So again, you've got to have a quick look. So this was the seven. And we can see we've got a few little strands there coming out. On this one, it was very difficult. It was very, very narrow stitch to actually get it to stay on the edge well. The standard stitching actually did do quite well for me. That did turn it quite nicely. So let's now go on to the stitch length and show you how that changes. So again, we're going to take the other seam allowance, put the other pieces of fabric underneath and we're going to start again. So we're back to where we were, okay, two length and five width. So we're just getting our eye in for that. 
and now the width should stay the same but we're going to change the length now let's put that up to a five or oh, it goes up to 4.5 see how much wider those stitches are and then let's just take that down as well and show you how that can be used as a satin stitch use that on a plique but I'll do you another session on a plique at some stage this is exactly what a test piece of fabric is for and doing these samples on my original one where's it gone it's a close seam here it is you can see that I used one piece of fabric and just did it consistently just a consistent width and length of stitch just to show you on that one and you could recreate that one if you wanted to but on this one it has shown you how the different elements do work so this was the stitch width so we had the same length so the distance between this point here all of the zag zig points should all be the same all the way along but the difference is with how much it goes over the edge or how deep the stitch is into your seam allowance and on this one we changed the stitch length so this one here the um the distance between each of these zags is different so that was the standard setting this one we turned it right up to the maximum that we could, which was 4.5. And you can see how that would, might be better on a woolen fabric, something quite thick. And then again, we went on to a very narrow stitch here, a short length. And that then meant that the um, stitches were much closer together. And if we went even closer than this, we'd get a satin stitch, which we use for a plique as well. So when you're starting your projects, it's always good just to do a quick sample on a scrap piece of fabric to have a look and see how your stitch is going to lie. So you can then choose what width and what length you want, which is going to suit the needs of your fabric. But have a play around, test the different stitches, have a look at your instruction book, as I said, and just work out how to change the width and the length of your stitches, because that will then help you understand how you can use these stitches better. So once you've done that, you can then label this one up as your zigzag sample. And again, you'll be able to feel, fold it, turn it over and feel from the other side as well, how those stitches feel under your fingers, because that's going to give you some idea as to how they're going to be when they are actually, um, when it's sewn onto your garment and then it's, you're pressing it after you're wearing it. So again, that's, um, this is the lesson on the zigzag stitch for a seam finish.